Thank you for joining McCormick Systems in Database Management and Building Assemblies portion of our training. Today we'll be looking at the database in some great detail. We'll be looking at how we can change things and uh, customize. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to explain that McCormick has actually four databases. So as you know from previous videos, we do have an items database and an assemblies database. And you can simply click on the two to get to either of them. Now what else McCormick has is temporary databases. So if I click on to my permanent slash job specific tab here on the right hand side, it will now flip me to my job assemblies or I can flip through my items. So now I'm on my job items. So McCormick has job specific items. These are temporary items and assemblies. If you were to make a change to this database, I can come in here, I can add parts, I can do whatever I'd like. These parts are only going to stay on the job. Now, if I go back to my permanent database, I have items and I have assemblies, permanent. If I were to make a change here, I'm always going to have that change. So this is a permanent change to the database. So McCormick gives you the option. You can make a temporary change or a permanent change. So today we're going to work in our temporary databases. And we're going to do some building of uh, maybe a temporary item, building of an assembly. So let's flip back over to the job specific and again, if I look up at the top of the window, it says job assemblies or job items. Let's go and build a job item. So job items, quite simple. We have fixtures here that you could build. We're going to scroll down here below the fixtures. We're just going to find an empty line. Here we go. So with that empty line, everything takes place in the review button. So if we look down in the middle of the window, we do have a review button. When I hit that review button, it does open up a side window showing me the details of this item. To build an item is quite simple. We're going to go ahead and we're going to name it. So I'll go ahead and name it widget. And you can put in the manufacturer, the catalog number if you'd like. Uh, we get down to the pricing. I can throw in a, a price for this widget. I can call it, uh, oh, I don't know, it's $50 each. So if I come here, I can pick the unit now. So do I want that uh, that $50 each? Do I want it $50 per hundred, per thousand? Again, exempt and quoted are the last two. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick each for that. And I'm gonna use the same unit all the way down all of my prices. So now my widget costs $50 each. The next line we have, we have our labor. So we can fill in our bid labor here. And change order one and change order two are percentages of bid labor. So as soon as you fill in bid labor, let's say it takes a half hour to install this, so 0.5 hours. If we look down, now we can see that change order labor one and change order labor two has been filled in. If you wanted to, you could fill in NECA one, two, and three, but absolutely up to you what you're going to fill in. I'm going to leave NECA one, two, and three blank for today. Now again, what is this labor? Is it 0.50 each? Is it per hundred, per thousand? Let's go ahead and put 0 0.50, 0 0.63, and 0.75 each. So that is building a temporary item. If you look back here on the left hand side, you can see that I have built the widget. Uh, you, there are other things you could put in. You could put in a cost code if you wanted to. So we could call this widget is maybe under the uh, branch rough. And then you can, we have schedule coding too, depending on your system. So I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. But again, there are your, if we scroll down a little bit more on the item details, you can see your price adjusters. You can see your labor adjusters, so you change order labor one, change order labor two. There's your percentages above bid labor. So these are things you could fill in. But again, the basics of an item concentrate on this top part here. The name, a price, and a labor. That is all to enter in an actual item. Now, the one thing you do have to look out for is this one little field here. It's called count and length input. Now, this is, can you enter in a count? Can you enter in a length? 
can you enter in both? I just want to throw in a number. Most of the time we keep it on both. But you want to have that set. If we do have it set to none, it will not allow you to do takeoff. So keep that on both. And header, is this a header? Yes or no? Uh, no, this is an item, we're going to take it off. So again, most of the time building a simple item is as easy as putting in the name, the price, and the labor. As soon as this information is in, you're ready to go. You can you can close your, your side window by hitting item, so that kind of removes your your, your side window. So now that we have the widget, we can now take it off. So again, take off is simple. Simply click on it. I want 25. I type in 25. I hit enter. It drops it into my audit trail and I am done. I've now built that widget. It is ready to go and ready to use. So again, we have built this in the job items section of our database. So this widget will only stay on this job. If I wanted that widget permanent, I would simply go back to my permanent database. I could find where I want it to go and I could put it under that category. We can insert lines. I will show you that here momentarily, but let's finish up our temporary uh, database here. So again, very easy. You simply click on a line, review it, type in what you want, widget 2, give it a price, 25 bucks. And labor 0.25 each. I built widget 2. I click on widget 2. I can close my database and I can take it off from here. So again, I want 10 of those widget 2s. Hit enter. Simple as that. So McCormick makes it very easy to customize and change your database on the fly. Okay, so now we're going to look at building an assembly. An assembly is about the same. You're going to do everything in your review button. So first, let's flip over to our job assemblies. There we go. So again, now we're on job assemblies. We can scroll below the fixtures. There's, a, there's our, our job assembly and empty line. When I hit this review button, it is now an empty assembly so what we do is first off we can name it so let's name this assembly widget assembly there's the widget assembly now with the widget assembly all you have to do is you hit add mode so when I hit add mode it opens up another window and I can drag this window anywhere I'd like so maybe sometimes it's easier to go over here or underneath it's up to you whatever you feel comfortable with but now all you're doing to build an assembly is transferring out of this window into the widget assembly window so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna use what's nice is with McCormick we can use anything we want we can use pre-built items or pre-built assemblies or I can go back to my temporaries and I can use my temporary items or assemblies so today I'm gonna go to my permanence and we're just going to transfer in some some random parts here so let's first take an assembly let's click on an assembly I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find a uh, let's say a, a receptacle now the menu here works off of the last window you touch so if you touch this window here and you use the menu it is going to flip this database to whatever you find in the menu so what you want to do is you want to make sure you touch the window that you're going to be finding this information in. So I want to find the receptacle in this window here. So I touch the window and I come over here to the day, to the menu and I want a device standard receptacle. And there you go. It has flipped me to the receptacle portion of my database. And all I have to do is click on say a duplex. I click on that duplex and you will notice since we are in add mode you have a transfer button at the bottom of this window. So I click on the duplex, I hit transfer. How many of the assembly would you like? I would just like one assembly. Would you like to multiply the constants? We're just going to keep it at one. I hit OK, and there you go. Look at that. All of your parts from this duplex have transferred into my widget assembly. So I can continue on. I can add, say, if I wanted to add wire to this. I click on my items. So I'm going to click on an item now. 
and I want to find some just some standard wire. So again, your menu works off of the last window you touch, so be sure you touch this window. We want wire, copper, stranded, THHN. Here's 12 THHN. I hit transfer. Now I'm going to want to read what this says. Because I'm pointed to this box, it's asking me, do we want to replace the box with the 12 THHN? For this scenario, I'm going to say no. And how many of the item, 12 THHN, would you like? I would like 10 feet of it. You type in 10, hit OK. Constants, we're going to keep it at zero. And there you go. Now you can see, I'm going to get out of add mode, so I click add mode again. You can see my transfer button disappears, and I can actually just get rid of that window if I wanted to. But it is very easy to build an assembly. So you you basically hit add mode and transfer whatever items you want into the assembly window that you were working on. So there it is. I can close my assemblies by clicking on the assembly button, and I can do my takeoff right here on the fly. So I would like 50 of these widget assemblies. Hit enter, drops it down into the audit trail, and I am ready to go. So we've built a temporary item, we've built a temporary assembly. The process is the same in the permanent database. So if I flip back to the permanent database, let me open up my menu again. The process is the same. If I click on an empty line here in the permanent database and I review it, you can see the window is the same. You build the assembly, the only difference is that assembly will be here forever. So we're not going to build any in the permanent database, but we do have some other cool options. And I'm going to show you that option right now. It's called the database utility. Now with McCormick, we have several things we can do with our database. So let's open up our database utility, and it shows this little menu right here next to our database. Now you can see the options here. I can copy things. I can move things. I can range edit. So range edit means I can grab a, a group of items and I can actually change, say, an, a multiplier or I can change a, a cost code, anything I want. Range edit means you're going to change a group of items. And then here's your insert button. So say I did want to build a couple more assemb uh, assemblies here and I've ran out of room. So I'll say I need a couple more lines here. I click on my database utility and all I have to do is hit insert and it, it brings open my block operation. So I'm gonna insert new quantity, how many? I'm gonna insert three lines, and insert after 13502, so there's your number. I hit OK, and as simple as that, it opens up and creates three new lines for me in my McCormick estimating program. So now all I have to do to build this, because I'm in my permanence, is review, type in what I'm gonna build, Hit add mode, it's going to add, you're going to be able to add your products to this assembly, and you are done. You've then created a permanent assembly. And the same thing works in the items. If you needed to create a permanent item, you can insert lines, you review, you add what you want to this permanent database, and it will be there forever for you. So, again, McCormick gives you the option. Do you want to build an item or an assembly permanently? or do you want to build it temporarily? You have that option with your permanent and job-specific databases. Uh, the last thing I am going to explain, we won't go too deep into it, but if we don't have a category here, our menu, our takeoff menu, is also customizable. You can add categories to this menu. You can add subcategories. Uh, you can uh, add new categories within one of our current categories. So the options are endless within McCormick Systems. That is it for basic building of the database and basic uh, database management. Uh, if you have any questions, please call in to McCormick Tech Support for help. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.